Okay, so now to actually make calculations with this, um, it, it's not as straightforward. We have to do a couple of extra steps. And so let's um, get into this. So I'm gonna, we're gonna use this example from vibrational spectroscopy, all right? Um, so let's get into this whole beta thing. Remember, that's just um, a shortcut for saying one over K Boltzmann T, okay? Which is gonna have units of one over energy. Remember, K Boltzmann is joule per Kelvin, times the Kelvin is one over joules, all right? Um, and so the value of KBT at 298 Kelvin is, and I just did this um, directly, so make sure that you can get to this value yourselves, 4.116 times 10 to the minus 21 joules is the value of KBT at room temperature, okay? So 298K times 1.38 times 2 minus 23. Um, so this is about 25 milli electron volts. So 0 0.0257 EV, so about 26 milli electron volts, right? One, two, three. Um, but if I want to do this example from vibrational spectroscopy, it becomes useful to use units of wave number. You guessed. Okay. And so remember from the first lecture, I can calculate wave number by saying one over the wavelength. But in this case, because I have energy, um, I can just simply say that it's energy divided by HC. Okay. And that will give me this value of beta in terms of wave numbers. We can keep it in terms of energy, right? If you look at these equations, right? If I have, you know, these values in uh, joules, then my beta needs to be one over joules. But it's, it's very useful as chemists, right? To be able to enter, convert between units, okay? And I like the wave number and the electron volt a lot. Um, so to make that conversion, Okay, to make that conversion, what I need to do is say K Boltzmann T, which remember the product KBT gives me energy, divided by HC. So when I say KBT divided by HC, it's going to give me that value in units of wave numbers. Technically, it's going to be one over meters, and then I have to convert. All right, um, so then I can take this value right here the 4.116 times 10 to the minus 21 joules and just divided by Planck's constant times speed of light. I'm just going to leave those as H and C. Um, do it out for yourselves, right? Make those calculations happen. Pause the video if you have to. I'm just going to keep moving forward. Um, so when I do that, I get 207, 22, 1 over meters, and in one meter, there's 100 uh, centimeters. So I get 207, uh, we'll just leave it at that, that's fine. 207 wave numbers is the value of K Boltzmann T at room temperature. Okay, that's a good thing to remember because now what we can do with that, and so remember, um, you know, technically, if the way I've done this, KBT equals HC, this equals 1 over beta. And you notice beta equals 1 over KBT. So technically, beta equals 1 divided by 207 wave number. And now what makes this useful is when I go up to this partition function, I can supply my value of energy in terms of wave numbers uh, which is really, really useful if we're, we were to use FTIR data, right? If we were to use the, um, the stretching frequency of like, you know, an OH bond, right? At about 3,500 wave number. We could plug that into our equation directly. Okay, so let's do that. Let's keep moving forward. And so here's a calculation to make. So calculate the population of molecule AB, um, generic molecule AB, right? And it's ground vibrational state, nu is zero and its first excited state, nu is one, if it has a vibrational energy of 2,000 wave number. So that means like if we were looking at an infrared spectra, right? Uh, let's see here. You know, we have wave number 
on this axis and uh, we'll say percent transmittance on this axis, right? Then we would see like this peak and that would correspond to our um, 2000 wave number, okay? So what is a population of states? Um, so here I've uh, drawn up the molecular partition function that we just discussed, all right? Um, and my nomenclature is, um, uh, should be somewhat consistent, okay? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and calculate this thing. So once again, as always, um, you can pause the video, try the calculation out for yourself. You can um, watch me run through this while I'm listening to uh, some music. Hopefully they don't flag me for copyright infringement on the YouTubes. Um, so let's go for it. Let's calculate this sucker. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's walk through what I did here. So a lot of this is kind of plugging and chugging um, and recognizing what to do with these, you know, quantum numbers. Remember I told you the ground vibrational state is new zero. First excited state is new one. And you notice in this first term, we don't have any of that, right? It's just going to be, um, remember, Beta is one over the 207 wave number, and we said the energy is 
2,000 wave numbers, so you can see by having equivalent units, it makes life much easier. All right? And um, this second chunk, because for the ground state, nu is zero, this becomes an e raised to the zero power, which is just one. So here we get 0.99936. And if you remember from the lecture, the first lecture, we said everything will be, nearly everything will be in the ground vibrational state. And here you can see we now have the quantitative uh, proof of that, right? 99.9936% of the molecules with this 2000 wave number energy are in the ground state. And now it's tempting to say, well, then wouldn't the population of the next excited state be one minus this quantity? And it, for the most part, is. However, we still have to accept the fact that there could be populations of molecules in um, state three and four and five and six and so on. So when we go to make that calculation population of level um, one, as opposed to level zero, we still have this term here in the partition function, which is um, comes out to be the same result. But now it's e raised to the 1 times um, beta times e, OK? And so that makes it just slightly a little bit different. Oh, I wrote 2, 5. I meant to write 2, 3, right? So it makes it just slightly different than if we had done 1 minus this value. But all the same. Um, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percent of these molecules are in the second vibrational excited state, okay? So we've just quantitatively proven um, what we learned from the equal partition theorem last time. And that's the game we're going to play in PCAM. We're going to talk about concepts. We're going to try to wrap our head around these concepts and make guesses. And then we're going to calculate that to prove if it's correct or not or reasonable, okay?